Hello everybody, I'm so excited that you could join us coming out today on U-Turn Live. Let me tell you, it's going to be me talking to you about a spiritual tool we cannot live without. Not to mention, today on U-Turn, we're going to be talking about Street Talk, that amazing segment coming up. Welcome to U-Turn Live. It, it's life changing. Lives transform. It's U-Turn. From bondage to freedom. You turn live. The reason why I preach the way I preach is simply because I know what I've been through to get to the place where I am in my life. It was thought it was tragedy, but it was an opportunity to give me a testimony. Death to life on you turn live. Traveling across the globe, winning the loss at any cost. Here's your host, Bishop Kamal Fraser. Hello everyone, welcome back to U-Turn Live. Today is going to be an amazing and incredible episode just for you. Today I'm going to be teaching you, I'm going to be sharing some stuff with you. As Christians, we go through so much, but I'm going to give you an incredible tool, a spiritual tool that we cannot live without. I'm telling you, man, the, the, you know, I don't know how many of you have had a great week, how many of you had a challenging week, but this show will give you something. It's got something for everybody. So I want you to truly position yourself today because God is in control. This is the day that the Lord have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I hope somebody can say amen with me. Uh, you know, uh, as we come on to U-Turn Live on this amazing um, television network, I believe that, you know, God is going to use this broadcast to make such an impact in each of your lives. And I know that there's a reason why you are tuned in at this moment. It's for a difference to be made in your everyday living. So position yourselves now. But I want to talk to you. I want to get you to a place of worship right now. I have an incredible friend, uh, brother. Uh, uh, you know, he's an amazing uh, man of God, originally from Jamaica, but now lives in New York. That's an, uh, an incredible ministry. And he came on my show, and I wanted to give you an opportunity for him to lead you into worship. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my friend, my brother, Odain Roden as he leads us into worship. The news came to Jesus. Lord, please confess. My brother is sick and without your help, he may not last. So Mary and Martha watch their brother die. They waited for Jesus, but he did not come, and they wondered why. Listen, so the death watch was over, he was buried for days, and somebody said, he'll soon be there, oh the Lord's on his way, and Martha ran. And then she cried Lord if you had been here you could have healed him and he'd still be alive but you're four days away and all hope is gone she said Lord we don't understand why the way is so Jesus said, you see, his way is God's way. It's not yours or mine. Church, isn't God great when he's four days late? Then he's still on time. Listen to so Jesus says, Sister Martha, I know you're busy, but come here and show me that grace. But Martha said, Lord, you must be confused. For Lord, you don't understand. He's been buried for days. Listen. But the great stone was a Roman. And Jesus cried. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Then somebody said, look, look, look. He
angel called fear and you cried to the Lord Lord my bills are due but he's not appeared listen don't be discouraged for my God is the same I wish I had a witness this morning he'll still be there and he'll roll back your stone and he'll call still on time. What a powerful song. Thank you so much, my dear friend. Um, Odain Roden, listen, man, that song right there uh, is one of my favorite songs. Uh, you came to visit, and I asked you to do that one. So I'm telling you, when he is four days late, he is still on time. Listen, my friends and family, get ready now, uh, because the Lord has given me a word just for you. So I want you to position yourselves and orchestrate your, uh, your heart right now and get ready for this word. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you have given me this opportunity to release into your people's lives. Father, for everyone tuned in this moment to hear, Lord God, a spiritual tool we cannot live without, Lord. Help me now decrease self, increase you, and let your word make an impact. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. Listen, I want to talk to you guys today about faith is the victory. This, in this time right now in this world, we need faith more than anything else. So many people are hurting or being um, challenged by the, the, the issues of life. And the one thing we know that God has given us that we can utilize is faith. So I thank God that faith is something that I can remind you and motivate you with right now because faith is not for God. Faith is for us. Glory be to God. Grace is for him. Faith is for us. And the more we have faith is the more God will release his blessing upon us. But faith is the victory. If you want to be victorious, we need to utilize faith. Hallelujah. So I'm going to talk to you about that spiritual tool we cannot live without, which is faith. You know, every Christian has to have faith. In fact, that is the way we obtain salvation, is through faith. Based on Ephesians chapter um, 8 and verse 9, you know, it tells us that. Because faith does, uh, faith is what we use to obtain our blessings or to reach in and receive our miracle, our healing, our deliverance. I don't know what you are believing God for, but you have to utilize faith in order to do that. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, verse 2 says, the elders obtain a good report. But this is that tool we as Christians cannot live without. What is faith? Let's really ask ourselves, and some of you may be asking that question, what is faith really? So I'm going to break that down to you right now based on the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3 and 5. It says, and we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but does not, or doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is, not, and, and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. So you hear the scripture clearly. The way you know you are living in him and you are applying faith to your life is one that will follow the scripture. In other words, when you hear the word of God, you believe the word of God, which is what emphasizes or instructs us or let us know that we are utilizing the faith that we do have. Glory be to God. So, so the, the, the scripture is clear. If you follow the commandment of God, it is, that's how easy it is for us to apply faith 
uh, to the things that we want to see God do in our lives. So, so let's talk this. Let's talk this as well. Faith has no room for doubt. If, if you want to obtain something in your life, if you need a miracle in your life, such as, uh, uh, you know, a breakthrough, a deliverance, um, you cannot doubt because there is no room. See, in other words, when you are believing, faith is believing, when you are believing for something, you cannot doubt and expect to obtain. So if you, if you are going to believe God for something, you need, to, you need to lay doubt aside. And when you lay doubt aside, it means that without a shadow of a doubt, that thing will come to pass. I don't know if you may believe in God for something in particular right now, but if you will lay doubt aside and say, listen, I believe that it's going to happen without a shadow of a doubt. I know it shall happen. Listen to what the scripture says in Acts chapter 12 and verse 7. The Bible says, suddenly there was a bright light in the cell. This is Paul, um, you know, uh, Peter, excuse me, was, it was locked in prison, but and suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to, uh, to awaken him and said, quick, get up. And the chains of fell off of, his, off of his wrist. I want you to highlight one particular word there, the word quick. Can I tell you that faith is quick? Which means there is no doubt that the chains were already fall off. The, 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 the angel of the Lord says, quick, Peter, it is time for you to go. And without a shadow of a doubt, without thinking that he was chained up, because God was speaking to him, he just walked away and he was released. Can I tell you today that God wants to release you if you will just move quickly and believe right now that you are delivered, you are set free. What is it that you're believing God for? God has already done it for you through grace. He said, all you got to do is receive it. The Bible says, knock and the door shall be opened seek and you shall find ask and it shall be given isn't God a God of mercy and a God of grace and a God that will make provision for his people yes he is he will why because faith is provided to us to believe for it and then we shall receive it glory be to God look at faith faith has no room for fear earlier we said it has no room for doubt but you cannot fear if you are believing God for something. The scripture said this in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. See, so many people are a afraid of natural people and natural things. But God says, fear not. If you are going to believe God for something, have no fear. And whether or not it's going to come to pass. Have no fear in whether or not you are going to achieve it. Have no fear in what the result will be. In fact, so many of us, brothers and sisters, so many of us at times, we, are, we get so afraid when things are not coming on a timely manner or coming in a timely manner. Some of the times we are believing God for things and, and the time is getting so close and we get afraid. But I hear the word of the Lord is saying to us, Faith has no room for fear. So let's cast down fear. Let's dismiss fear out of our lives and you will begin to see faith rise up in your life. Why don't you pray instead of fear? Why don't you pray instead of doubt? Because the time we used to doubt or the time we used to be afraid is the same time I believe God could be blessing us. Glory be to God. I know I'm talking to somebody right now. Faith has a power in itself. It don't need nobody. It don't need a friend. It don't need a brother. Faith has power in itself. It carries its own power. So if you really focus on that, you will see that God is saying that he is powerful and he has given you authority. He said, I have given you a power. I have given you an authority to dominate the earth. Genesis talks about that in such an incredible way. But let's look at the first Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. The word of the God, Lord says, Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you waver, uh, uh, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Glory be to God. He said, if, if, God, if God be God, then follow him. You know, and if you follow him, you will realize that the power and the authority 
authority that you have in your hands. And when you have power and authority, anybody right now, if you think about the, 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 the office of the President of the United States, or the office of the government of Jamaica, or the office of the Prime Minister of England, or, uh, you know, you have to understand this indirectly. They have power and they utilize it so many times, whether it's to fight a war or whether it's to, uh, whether it's to get their way. But, but glory be to God, we have a power to obtain, to obtain blessings and favor of God. And that is something that we should be grateful for and we should be rejoicing to God for. Why? Because we don't have just some common power, but we have the power of the Almighty God. And that is, what, that is something to be so excited about. Glory be to God. The next thing I want to talk to you about is faith has that's faith faith in itself or faith uh, uh, faith defiles logics faith defiles logics glory be to god so if you look at that with me faith defiles logics and the scripture that goes with that is john chapter 14 and verse uh, and verse 11 it says just believe that i am in the father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Or at least believe. So, so, so God is saying faith defiles, defies logics. It, 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 is, it is emphasizing that at least believe for what you have seen done. Don't believe because of what you've seen, you, you have, uh, you know, you have not seen, but which we have, we, the Bible says we should do, you know, but, but believe for at least what you have seen done. You have seen miracles. You have seen signs. You have seen wonders. You have seen God turn things upside down. I, I like to say this. Why not think back? where you have been coming from. One songwriter says, when I look back over my life and I think it over, I can surely say God is great. Why? Because you should definitely believe simply because of what you have been seeing done. You've seen God. You've seen God raise someone from the dead. You've seen him heal your brother or your sister. You've seen him save and sanctify someone that you thought would have never, ever been saved. You've heard the story of Paul, of how kind of Christian he used to, how kind of person he used to be before he became a Christian. But God turned his life around. So therefore, believe and have faith simply because of those very reasons. Glory be to God. Now, how important is faith? How important is faith? Based on the scripture, faith, uh, based on the scripture, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists, that he rewards those who, uh, who sincerely seek him. Glory be to God. Uh, now, God is a rewarder. Of those who seek him and if you believe in your heart and you know that like the scriptures tells us it is impossible to please God without faith so that alone should make us understand that the tool the tool that we cannot live without right here right now is faith and if you understand that the tool that we can't live without is literally sitting in front of us and we need to believe God utilizing that tool. You recognize that, you know, faith is an important part in our lives. Now, the third, third point I want to make to you today is how we can get the faith we need. Because there are a lot of us today that don't know how to even believe. Glory be to God. Here's what the scripture says. Mark chapter 9 and verse 24 and 25. It says, the father instantly cried out. I do believe. Wow. But help me overcome my unbelief. Verse 25. When Jesus saw that the crowd uh, of, uh, of unlockers was, cr was crowing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. I like to look right back at the verse 24. The father in instantly cried out, I believe, I do believe, but help 
me overcome my unbelief. So God is ready and is available to help us overcome the things that we are not so strong in. But you have seen where healing and miracle happens right there. Why? Because God is faithful and willing to help you get from one level to the next. Glory be to God. Final scripture is John chapter 3 and verse 16, which is well known to so many. And here's what the scripture said. For God so loved the world so much that, uh, that, uh, that he gave his one and only son, so that whosoever or everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. Look at how many times the scripture is saying for us to believe. And the more we would believe is the more we would experience the greatness and the fullness of God. The more we apply faith to our lives is the more we will experience God's favor, God's miracle, God's signs and God's wonders. So let faith be the tool in your life that you don't leave uh, on the wayside, you don't leave it going to work, you don't leave it going to see friends, you always want to have faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I hope you were blessed by that word today. I hope God, that, that through this word, showed up in your life in a way like never before. Because faith is a tool we cannot live without. Glory be to God. I'm going to encourage you right now to, 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 you know, to position yourself. I'm going to go to a break. But when we come back, guys, we are going to talk about, we're going straight to street talk. So thank you for watching. We'll be right back with some more information. Network welcomes you to Street Talk, a show designed to strengthen your relationship with God as you discover God's purpose for your life. Welcome to Street Talk. See, it's Street Talk, and we are going on the streets to talk to you, family, friends, because we want you to weigh in on what our topic is all about. See, it's not Street Talk unless we get you to weigh in from off the streets. So uh, marriage and family is a very important topic that I believe men and women of God don't speak about much. However, it is a place where I believe men and women should hear a lot of biblical perspective. So we went out and we asked people who should be the head of the house, who best fit that category. Uh, listen to what these people had to say. A man should always be a leader at all points and all times of his life. So a leader should be firm. So that is a good thing. Men were created to be that and nothing is wrong with the man being the head and they should be. Well my views on that is um, because of my beliefs I believe in the Bible. That's what the Bible states. However um, if a man is going to head your household you have to ensure that it's a, a, a righteous man, a man that will do what is right concerning his family. A man should be the household uh, head because God ordained it first. And um, through 10, 11 years of marriage, I experienced that and I truly believe. I believe in what the Bible says and that's what it says. The man is the head of the household and of such he should act in that way. So you had an opportunity to hear what these awesome people have to say about the specific question, who should be the head of the household? Now, it is biblical that we, as um, it is biblical that men, uh, of course, be the head of the house. But many times people take that in such a awkward or wrong way. Uh, being the head it simply means that they are leaders. Being the head simply means that they. They, the, the, the woman or the children have someone to, to follow. Now, a man can be such a great head or such a, an amazing leader 
based on the principles and biblical reasons are the teaching of the Word of God. Now, uh, so, so we want you to understand that it is biblical that man should be the head. However, it does not exclude partnership in a relationship. Welcome back. And I hope you guys have been blessed by this uh, amazing broadcast today. I believe that God truly showed up in a way like never before. Listen, faith is definitely what each and every one of us need to get through this time. There is uh, so many that are, have lost loved ones, lost um, friends, families, lost jobs, lost homes. We need faith to believe that God will bring us through this. You know, it is so hard for so many to take up that mantle, but especially for those that are Christians. We have believed that is why we become a Christian. We believe in the Almighty God. We believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again on the, on the third day. You know, and uh, the salvation made an impact in our lives based on Ephesians chapter 8 and verse 8, where it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of God so by grace you are saved through faith so we all need that faith to maintain uh, you know our everyday living and I'm gonna ask you today to believe with me and to pray with as I pray for you right now and I believe with you you know, let's tie together as the scripture declares where two or three come together and agree on the same thing there he is in the midst so let's believe, with, well, let's believe together now as I pray for you and believe that this time your faith will begin to rise. As the scripture declares that your faith, you, we will go from faith to faith and glory to glory. You may be at a place in your life right now where it feels like it's hard to believe. You want to throw in the towel. You want to drop it. You want to get rid. You want to, you you know, give everything up. But I'm going to believe with you that your faith will rise up because faith is a tool you and I cannot live without. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that your people have tuned in for such an, a, a time as this. Father, I pray that as they are going through challenging moments, Father, you are making an impact in their lives now. I declare, Lord God, from, with the authority invested in me, Lord, that they will begin to increase in their faith. Enlarge their territory now, Lord God. Lord God, your word declares you will not give us more than we can handle or we can bear. I thank you now that faith is rising up in our brothers and sisters' lives. I thank you, Lord, that faith is being utilized even now for salvation throughout their household. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you were blessed again today. I hope that you, if you don't know Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to definitely accept him now by uh, grabbing someone and say, let me pray with you or have them to pray with you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But we encourage you to stay tuned for our next episode on, on U-Turn Live next week, uh, same time, right here on this network. So we look forward to seeing you guys. God bless you. You have a blessed day. Here's some more information about our ministry. Bye-bye.